Hi everybody, um, it's Jeremy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through how to download and use MyFitnessPal. Um, MyFitnessPal is probably the most popular app and website to use for um, you know healthy eating, that sort of thing. Um, there are some flaws with it. No app is perfect. Um, I will go over those so that you kind of know what to expect there. This is also very user friendly, which is why I choose to use this with my clients. It's pretty simple, it's pretty basic, it walks you through everything step by step. Um, and it does have some really great emails when it gives you the option to sign up for those. A lot of people will automatically sign out of those things because it's spam. Um, there's some really great stuff that they send through there. So I really like this app and I recommend it for everybody. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it on a desktop computer. I know that most probably most people will probably do it on their phone now. That's fine. It's really easy to navigate. It's not very different. Problem is, my phone, I already have it, and I couldn't delete it to start over and do it again. So we're going to do it on here. If you have any questions on how to do that, you can always ask me when you're in here. I'm more than happy to help walk you through it. It's simple. So the first thing it says, it brings you up to this page. You can sign up with Facebook or with your email. Um, I generally will, you know, I'll, I'm going to use an old email account that I have that isn't linked to my current one. Um, so it'll ask you for your email address and it'll ask you to create a password. Um, pretty simple, basic stuff. You log in and then it'll ask you weight, height, and your goal weight, etc., etc. So I'm going to put in, I did my weight this morning, and um, if you're not sure about your height, and most of us overstate our height, please by all means get an accurate reading. You want this to be as accurate as possible. Um, I put 200.2 pounds, that was my weight this morning. Let's say my goal was 185. Um, it'll ask you your date of birth. I'll put that in. Um, I do accept gifts, if you can see this, so feel free to send those here. Anyways, um, so I'm going to put that in, and put my zip code, and we'll just use that as my username. So, it'll ask you to describe your activity level, okay? There's four different sections. There's sedentary, which is where you spend most of your day sitting. That includes if you have a desk job. A lot of us have those. A lot of people won't say sedentary because sedentary carries a negative connotation. I will always say to underrate the amount of exercise or activity that you do rather than overrate. Um, I tell most people to put sedentary because we'll get into what the exercise portion, what happens there. But don't overrate it. There's sedentary, there's lightly active, there's active, and there's very active. Um, I'm going to just put sedentary in because that's what I want to do. Uh, it'll ask you how many times do you plan on working out. Diet and exercise go hand in hand. Working out is not entirely necessary. Of course, if you're able to, it's recommended. Try and make time for that. That's about 20% of the equation. Nutrition is about 80% of the equation. This is going to help you with that. Um, it'll say how do you want to track expended energy. There's calories and then there's kilojoules. Calories, obviously. Um, I will, this is where I'll do my little mention about calories. Calories are not the end all be all. This will give you a good calorie number and it'll show you what to be under. That is basically your ceiling. Um, what happens with calories though is that we always try and beat the number. There's, the reason calories aren't the end all be all is because there's good calories and there's bad calories. If your goal number is let's say 1500 calories, well, I would say here's 1500 calories of lean protein, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, good dairy, that sort of thing. Here's 1,500 calories of cake, cookies, ice cream, chips, dip, pizza, etc. Same calorie number. One's good food, one's bad food. One you'll gain weight and be sick. The other one you'll lose weight or maintain a healthy weight. So don't put the emphasis just on the number. The content of what makes it up is really, really important. Okay. Um, but again, this is for tracking purposes. So it gives you a goal. Your goal options are lose a pound, a pound and a half, two pounds, or five pounds per week. Um, I recommend not going above 1.5. If you're aiming to try and lose more than 1.5, then you get into an unhealthy gray area. 1.5 pounds per week doesn't sound like a lot to a lot of people, but if there's 52 pounds in a week, 
that makes it that in a year you could lose 78 pounds at that rate. This is not a sprint, this is a marathon, so keep that in mind. Aim for a reasonable goal. One to one and a half pounds per week is my recommendation. So I'm going to highlight that and it'll tell me to sign up. I just click there and then um, it gives you the option to enter emails for friends, that sort of thing. Um, you don't have to. I just continue. So it gives me a target. As you can see right here, my target is 1,530 calories a day. Now it'll break it down into how many of that should be fats, proteins, and carbs. I'm going to tell you to, at least in the beginning, ignore that. That's not necessary to know. Plus, one of the flaws in the app is it doesn't differentiate between good carbs and bad carbs, good fats and bad fats, and good sugars and bad sugars. Um, for example, you could have a nice piece of salmon, an avocado, and maybe some almonds throughout the day. Those are all good foods. That's some of the, probably three of the five best foods that you can eat in the entire world. Um, this app will pop something up to tell you you're getting too many fats. That's because the app doesn't differentiate between good fats and bad fats. So I'm going to say don't worry about the micronutrient aspect initially. This is just to give you a really basic format to track what you're doing. Um, I'm going to hit get started now. And that shows me my goal. Now, what you'll see is you can go to your food and it'll let you add foods, right? There's your breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. It shows you your, thing, your, your different fats, carbs, protein, sodium, stuff like that right here. Now I can change my settings. I go under settings and it'll say, you know, what kind of calories do you want to track, macronutrients, meal names. You can add stuff here where you put different snacks for different times of the day. Snack one, snack two, if you really wanted to break it down like that. Um, you can change your diary sharing if you want to do this with a friend to see what the other's doing and kind of encourage each other or learn from each other because you can learn from each other. So you can make it friends only, you can make it public, you can connect on this. So you're doing this with friends. And then you just save your changes. Uh, I'm not going to do any of that for this one. Um, and then what you can do up here is go back to your food and I'll give you an example. I'm going to add a food, okay? So, I can search a database. Let's say I had an egg for breakfast. Let's say I had two. I'll hit search for egg, and it'll give me one large egg. Sounds pretty normal. Now there's egg benedicts, egg whites, egg bagels. I'm just going to go with a regular egg. Now it says how many servings. Well, let's say I had two. Okay, I'll just highlight that, delete that, change the number to two. I'll add it to my food diary. There it is. 143 calories, it'll break down the fats, proteins, sodium, etc. But if I look at, you know, what I'm doing today, it'll show me it subtracts that food out of my out of my target, right? And that's my ceiling, remember. So now I still have 1,387 calories throughout my day. Um, so let's say, now here's where it gets kind of tricky. I'm going to go back to my food. And this is all in a toolbar on your phone. It's different for iPhones and um, Samsung, etc. So you kind of have to play around with it. But again, it's really easy to navigate if you're even remotely tech savvy. I'm not, and I could do it. Um, let's say that... Now here's where it gets kind of tricky. Let's say for lunch I had a piece of um, pepperoni pizza. Okay? So I'm going to type in pepperoni pizza. And I'm going to hit that. And it'll give me a package an entire pizza, it'll give me one slice from Little Caesars, one slice from Domino's. The count is different on those, it'll give me a slice from Pizza Hut. The calorie number is different there. But most of them are around the range. The ranges I'm seeing offhand are about 380 calories to 290 calories. So what I'm going to do to err on the side of caution is I'm going to actually choose the one that's on the higher end of calories. I'm not going to choose the lower one because I'd rather be safe than sorry with my maximum. So rather than putting in 290 and actually having a piece that's 380 and giving myself calories that I don't actually have, I'm going to pick the one that's the highest calorie number. So I'm going to put in um, this slice of large cheese and pepperoni pizza. And let's say I had two slices, I'll change the serving there. Or you can change the serving size, right? So there's one slice there, you can see that actually put 21. We're going to go with two. I'm going to add that to my food diary, right? And this shows you your breakdown here of your carbs, your fats, your protein, your sodium, your sugar, etc., etc. So this is where I'm at. 
on my daily goal, this shows me what I have remaining right here, 631. That's for the rest of my day. That pizza was actually almost, two slices of pizza was half my caloric intake for the day almost. Now, that means I would probably want to change what I'm doing. I'm going to show you healthy food compared to bad food, right? Pizza was 378 calories for one slice of pepperoni pizza. Let's say I'm going to do a mixed green salad. So I do mixed greens. I type that in. I want to spell it correctly. I'm going to search that. And it'll give me mixed winter greens, mixed green salad, one serving. It'll give me mixed greens, one cup. I'm going to go with that because I made my own salad. That outtakes is already a pre-made one. So I'm going to go with making my own salad here. I go to mixed greens. Let's say I had two cups, right? So I change. I can leave it at a cup. I'll change that to two servings. And really, you can guesstimate. With, initially, you might want to measure things out, see what you're taking in. After that, you can kind of eyeball and guess because it's not an exact science. But I'm going to add that to my food journal. Now, two cups of mixed green salads, that's a good, decent salad. My calorie count there is 40. My calories for two slices of pizza is 756. Now we see the difference. It's literally 5% in a decent small salad. That's before I add stuff, but still 5% of what there is in two slices of, pe uh, of pepperoni pizza. So this gives you an idea and shows you kind of numerically the difference between good foods and bad foods. And when your calorie number is 1,500, when I say two slices of pizza is taking up half of that, you're going to go, well, that calorie number is low, or that just seems unreasonable. But when I point to two cups of mixed greens and say that that's 40 calories, then it seems reasonable. When I look at two eggs and it's 143, so that's less than 10% of my day. For two eggs, well, then it seems reasonable. When I talk about a banana being 100 calories or an apple being 70 calories or, you know, um... 20 almonds being 200 calories. That's still only, you know, an eighth of my day, essentially. So it is easy to be under that number depending on what you're taking in. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have the pizza. I could have this, and I could have that pizza, and I still have 591 calories remaining. Um, the trick is eating the right stuff. Um, what I want to mention, too, is in this, when you add exercise, here's what's happening. So if I add exercise, there's cardiovascular and there's strength training. You can add exercise all that you want. But let's say I did an elliptical. Okay, I'm going to search there. Didn't give me any results. Let's just say I did running. Hopefully this works. There we go. So running for 10 miles per hour, 6-minute mile, jogging. Um, let's say 5 miles per hour. Okay, I do jogging. How long did I jog for? Let's say I did, I don't know, half an hour, okay? I'll add the exercise, and it says I burned 363 calories. Now, if I go to my food journal, well, they added that back in. So the reason I tell people not to add exercise, at least initially, is because what happens then, if we look at this and we become very number-based, I'll look at that, and I'll go, okay, that's great, I'm under, and it doesn't give me room to add more. But some people will look at that, and they'll say, well, look, now I can have 954 calories instead of, you know, the 500 that I thought I could have. And then we start to just eat more and think that it's okay to do that. Um, that's not a bad thing eventually when you're in the shape that you want to be in. But in the beginning, you don't want to add that back on and go, well, now I can eat that. Because somebody will look at that, and I'm not saying everybody, most of us will use common sense in this, but somebody would look at that and go, that means I can have ice cream after dinner. That's not what that means. Um, at that point, then you're adding sugar, which turns into fat while you're asleep, and then you've undermined the entire process here just by doing that because you added calories back on that you thought you could have. Again, this doesn't mean that you have to starve yourself, but it does mean that, like, you know, keep the exercise out, put yourself at sedentary to begin, and then pay attention to this. And don't, one of the mistakes that people make with this app, too, is that they'll add something in after they've already had it. And after you've already had it, it's really easy to go, oops, I'm over, and then what's the point? I tell people to think about what you're going to have in advance. If I know what I'm going to have for breakfast tomorrow, and I probably do, I can plug that in today and see what that's at. If it's not a number I like, or if there's something that's a high calorie part that I maybe want to take off, like there's three strips of bacon and maybe I want two, well, or three strips is high, maybe I'll take it down to two take a few calories off that I can add later in the day for something healthy. That's a good thing. 
Um, so that lets you plan ahead rather than being reactive, you're being proactive. That's one of the great things with the app, and that's when you're using the app properly. You're staying under that number, you're not giving yourself leeway because you exercised, you're adding in good stuff, you're picking the right item, you know, not going low with it, and you're plugging it in ahead of time. Another great option in here is the recipes option, and I'm going to go over this for just a second. So you click on recipes, and what you can do here is you can either add one from online, or there's an option here to add the recipe manually. What you do in that case is you can create a name for it, right? You create a name, and then you can enter the ingredients here. You match the ingredients, and it'll create a whole recipe for you. And if you, if you food prep, which is something that's a really, really good idea, if you food prep, you can always reference that, pull up that recipe, it'll ask you how many servings, so you guesstimate how many servings you're gonna get out of it. You can always tweak it later, after you've done it, you know, it's trial and error in the beginning, but if I was to make a lasagna, I would put lasagna. I would add my various ingredients there. When I add the ingredients, it would tell you, you know, does this match, does this match, and you can, you can change the servings or the serving size and that sort of thing to make it so that it's as close as it can be, and my lasagna generally will make 12 servings, so it'll divide that number for you, put it right on there for you, so I can just click on that, drag it over to my, to my journal, see if I do my food diary, I can go right in here, and then I can go into, I can go to add foods, and I can go to frequent, my food, meals, recipes, there's all these options here. So you can just pull it right up, and you can, if I clicked on recipes, I can add any recipe that I put in there. I didn't add any because it takes time, but you can add it in there just like that, and then you just, it would bring up all the recipes you have, you click on the item that you wanted to put in there, and it would go right to your journal. And you just have it right there in front of you. Um, that's pretty much it. It's really easy to navigate. Now, up here you have a calendar. So let's say I knew what I was going to have for my food tomorrow because I'm thinking ahead. That's kind of the A number one thing that you should be doing whenever you're trying to be healthier and lose weight initially. Don't think about, don't wait until the last minute to go, well, what am I going to have? Think about what you want to have tomorrow. Um, and then you can go to tomorrow simply by clicking that, add in your foods, see how your calories are. With a 1,500 calorie diet, which is mine is, I, I would divide that in four. That's what I would be aiming for. So doing the math, top of my head, um, 350, 375 calories, okay, for each thing. So I would try and put in my breakfast, see if it's a 375. I would put in my lunch, my dinner, and all my snacks, and see if everything is kind of close to 375. It's not going to be perfect. You're not always going to hit that. But if I can make it so that it's that way, then my calories are distributed evenly throughout the day. Um, I'm not taking in too much at night, I'm not taking in too much, uh, the, the mass amount of my calories in the evening when I'm less likely to burn them off. My metabolism's engaged and everything's working the way that it should, my digestion's working, I'm getting all the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients I need throughout the day. That's how you want to structure that. Um, so to do a quick recap, you go in, the app is free, so go into your app store, it's MyFitnessPal, you download that, you can load, log in through your Facebook or through an email account. They'll ask you your particulars as far as your weight, your height, um, your activity level, and it'll ask you what your goal weight is. Set your goal for 1 to 1.5 pounds per week. I recommend not going over that. Um, don't worry about the micronutrients when it says there's too much fat or too, much, too many carbs or too many sugars because that part isn't great with the app. But the rest of it's really good. All you do, you can go into your journal, you can look up your foods, and you can add things, see how you're structured, or it'll give you a good format, and it'll set some guidelines for you as to what to do. And um, hopefully, you know, you find this pretty easy to navigate. Like I said, if you have any questions moving forward, just let me know. But this tool will really, really help you do a lot better as far as eating healthy and having a structured plan. Um, good luck, and uh, let me know how it goes. Thanks. Bye-bye.